but you guys asked for it, so here it is. Halo Combat Evolved, the more no vehicles. The previous no vehicles I did for Halo 3 The Covenant did so, so well, so thank you all so much for that. Today's video is even more elaborate than the first one of this series. There is so much to talk about and to dive in about this level, so let's get right to it. So this mission plays completely normal up until the very, very end, but there are some huge hurdles and obstacles you face to actually complete this goal. But until you reach the Warthog section, you want to go to the bridge as normal, plug Cortana in as she's gonna try to start the countdown. Obviously three or three Guilty Spark is going to stop you two. So you have to go to engineering, get some rocket launchers and blow up the fusion reactors, setting off a wildcat explosion to blow up the entire Pillar of Autumn. A little side note, I always thought the flood that were camoed in this area were amazing and I feel like they were underutilized. But once you destroy the four fusion reactors, you make your way to the lift and this is where things get interesting. To complete this mission, no vehicles, there are some huge obstacles you have to overcome. You have six minutes to reach the end of the mission of the Warthog Run. On Legendary, you only get five minutes. On foot, it takes you 10 to 12 minutes to complete the mission. Obviously, that isn't enough time, so how do you get around it? I remembered an old General Kid video where he actually managed to delay the timer and then remove it completely. So I chucked on Acrophobia because he used Cheat Engine. He basically made himself fly, I think with Custom Edition on the Chimera mod. So I flew up with Acrophobia and I went investigating to see how could I manipulate the timer. To my great delight, I found that if I flew automatically all the way to the top, the timer wouldn't appear at all. As a starting point, this was fantastic because we knew then we could manipulate it to try and get around it. I then took that information to the Halo Runs Discord, shout out to Joshington and Burnt, and they told me there's actually a way to remove the timer entirely by skipping Fohammer's load zone. On screen now is the trigger point, or I should say the trigger area of where Fohammer will actually be scripted to die. If you go over that, it will skip her death and make the timer say 0000, 000, 000, 000, 000 in the top left hand corner. You go back to the faux hammer trigger and the timer is gone for good. This gave me some hope. I was like, yes, this is actually achievable. Let's do it. But I found out upon further investigation that you can't complete the mission like this as no matter what you do, when you get to the end, the pillar of autumn will still explode. This is considered a bad ending. I thought this is a good starting point, but we can do better. So the next thing I attempted was, can I get there within six minutes to the faux hammer section, jump over the gap without acrophobia, and then walk to where the trigger goes 0000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, and then what would happen since everything has loaded properly. Before we got to that point though, there were other obstacles we had to face to actually get to that point. Number one being these really steep ramps. How do you get over them? If you're doing it solo and you grenade yourself up, you can only do that a few times before you will eventually kill yourself attempting the final one. There is three of these, and at most, you could survive two, even with overshield. On legendary, you only get five minutes, but you can survive more grenades. You actually take less damage from grenades on legendary. Unfortunately, because it was only five minutes, I couldn't do that, so I resorted to doing co-op with Brad, and one of us would grenade ourselves up, then the other would commit suicide, and then you'd spawn up top with the other player. By killing Flood along the way, we picked up extra plasma grenades, and then we were able to rinse and repeat for the other three ramps. Of the total six minutes we had to complete this section, it roughly took us probably four and a half to five minutes to actually do it. You can actually grenade yourself with Sputnik and Feather and then land where the skull is, but that felt a bit cheap. I actually played with the idea of meleeing the Warthog or blowing it up and getting it close enough then I could kill Brad and do something that's called a pogo. This trick, however, would require me to actually get into the turret of the Warthog, so then it was an instant disqualification. The next trick I tried was even harder, but if you put grenades underneath a vehicle on Halo Combat Evolved, explode them and jump, hitting flip as the vehicle flips up to splatter you, it will hit you and you'll take no damage. The problem with this one was it took way too long to set up. I only had one minute to move the Warthog, set up the grenades, and then launch myself then this one wasn't viable either. Not to mention the reset time was every time I died, there was no checkpoint, so I had to go all the way back, set it up all over again every five minutes, so I'd only get maybe 10 attempts per hour. I could have easily gone onto Custom Edition and set up my own personal checkpoint marker, but then I had a breakthrough right before I was going to go do that. There's actually a stationary turret that is in the area before Fohammer dies. Can I rocket the stationary turret through the hole 
to the faux hammer death area and then use that stationary turret to actually launch over the gap. This was still extremely tedious after an entire week of attempts putting the stationary turret in the best place possible even though I had Sputnik on. From my history of launching stationary turrets to kill Halo Hunters, I was able to pull this off. Alert! We need to keep moving. Get back in the war hall. The relief I felt that we actually got this was immeasurable. But the challenge has only just begun. If you noticed, the timer said 5 minutes 30 in that clip. And you're like, huh? How does he have 5 minutes on the clock? I thought it took him like 5 out of the 6 minutes to get there. Watch on screen now. Because we got over there with Sputnik just grenading over beforehand, and we walked all the way down, it actually resets the timer back to 6 minutes which solves the other huge problem of getting there within 10 to 12 minutes. Just grenading yourself over felt cheap. It's interesting that when you enter the stationary turret, it isn't actually affected by the feather skull. If you're out of it and you grenade it, you can send it soaring out of the map. But as soon as you enter it, it loses those properties. The smile I had on my face when I saw that timer reset to six minutes, oh, I was just ecstatic. I was like, this is actually doable. I can't believe it. By solving the six minute timer issue, and the faux hammer load zone that leaves one massive obstacle to completing this challenge and that is the huge gap that you're supposed to jump with the warthog. Now I watched Rocket Sloth's video before I did this and I saw they actually walked across the beams and then fell to their death when they tried to drop down. I actually thought it wasn't too far. I didn't think they would actually die from that fall because with Halo Combat Evolved, if you crouch upon landing correctly, you actually negate some fall damage and you can save yourself. So Brad and I jumped up, we followed where Rocket Sloth went, we jumped down and we survived with red health. Then the other person would kill themselves and we would rinse and repeat. This section actually didn't take that long to do, but still even doing that ate valuable time up of the six minutes we had to complete this mission. Watching on screen now, you can see we probably had about a minute left upon completing this section and we were running as fast as we possibly could to the longsword to try and get there before the timer reached zero. We honestly didn't know if this would complete the mission properly or we'd still get the Pillar of Autumn exploding because we still manipulated the timer to extend it by six minutes. So we sprinted and we ran and we got there as fast as we could. We got there with 10 seconds remaining. I was actually starting to think that this wasn't possible and that we were gonna run out of time. And to my great surprise, it finished the mission normally. It was done. The challenge was completed. I couldn't believe that it is actually possible to complete Halo Combat Evolved, the more, the Warthog Run section specifically, without using a Warthog. This is a huge achievement, even though I had to use Sputnik. I honestly couldn't believe that this was possible. Big thank you to Brad, Joshington, and Burnt for all helping me in their own way to me completing this. It really was a team effort and it wouldn't have been possible without you guys. I have referenced Rocket Sloths and General Kids videos in the description below. Next up is two betrayals, which is even harder than what we just did, especially getting down from the generators. But if you guys enjoyed this video, consider leaving me a like and subscribing. I think we're about to hit 40,000 subscribers as this video goes live. I'm going to be uploading almost every day heading into Halo Infinite. So I really hope you guys all enjoyed it. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you guys tomorrow with a brand new video. Bye guys. Alert! We need to keep moving. Get back in the Warthog.